Hi guys. Good morning everyone. I'm just trying to pin the class name. I'm just finding out how to pin. Let me see. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, right. Pin command. Crack. Good morning to everyone. Oh, happy Thursday. So, I hope you guys can uh, hear me properly because I'm too close to the camera now, but I will try to keep up the same voice when I move to my mat as well, right? For today's class, then you might need uh, uh, blocks, one or two blocks, and a towel and water bottle, and then a strap. I'd say if you don't have a strap, what you can do, maybe just uh, grab a belt, a normal belt, that would be better because that's just for you to tighten up your uh, food or maybe just holding on to your food so that would be more easier to move right and left for the lineman class. We'll be doing um, a slow pace practice but focusing more on the relative positions so how you can arrange or in line with that contact position as that's what all about alignment. You, you can just try your level best with your asanas. Sometimes the holding time will be a little longer. And try your level best. Don't need to force yourself, right? And uh, let me see again. So the people are joining in. Yes, uh, good morning everyone. And hope things are good and better. So try to do a lot of pranayamas as I said last uh, session also that would give you a good um, immune system that will boost up your immune system as well. So that's what you need uh, more for current situation, right? So, we'll start up soon now. So before I start up there, if you have any suggestions or comment, and you can always uh, put it there in the comment section. So then I will have a look at it right after the class, right? So get ready and Back to the mat. <clears throat> so the blocks, I've had two blocks and a strap. This is more important. So even if you don't have a, this belt or strap, so your towel, because I've taken a bigger towel today, so that would be more easier to find it more comfortably to grabbing your legs or your hands. So sometimes using the uh, hands also that would be more fine. Here, sit in an uncomfortable position. So before you're sitting up here, let's just stretch the both legs in front. Checking more with your knees, right? You can bring your left leg under your right kneecap. So you're not moving your foot more outside until you see, you try to keep the leg just right under your kneecap. And bring your right leg under your left. So try to focus more of your hips. You can using your hands to rolling your buttocks to the back so to feel your glute muscles are pressing comfortably on the mat so that your hips are not something like these or here try to keep it more equal line and then the spine stays straight line. Relax more of your shoulders lifting the chest the sternum to breathe in and out through the nostrils. Your hands just stays on the top of your thighs. So stay here with your eyes closed for a few breaths. Longer inhalation, checking out your abdomen comes out, the side of the chest that moves outward direction. As you exhale, abdomen moves in, the chest shrinks. To so feel or visualize your respiratory. We'll give another four breath, inhale deeply, Exhale, smooth. Three more breaths to inhale. Exhale, smooth. Two more breaths to inhale deeply. Exhale, smooth. And one long inhale. And as you exhale, joining the palms to the center of your heart for Namaskar Mutra, the salutation to the Gurus and the earth. A longer inhale and exhalation. So you can just slowly open your eyes. 
Namaste everyone. I hope you can clear you can, you can hear me clearly here now. Let me see if you're there. If you're not able to hear, I guess you guys can hear me there, right? Take it. So the position remains the same, the sitting position. Well, there's no change with that position. <clears throat> so if you have the block, so just placing your blocks right in front. So when you place a the block there in front, so try to put it in a top height. So you had to have three options, top height, then medium height, and then low height. So try to put it in the top way in front. And try to check more with your hands. So pressing the palms against the block. You can just move in your hips to the back or you can move your uh, blocks in front. You can see from the side view that I'm not sinking down but trying to bring the elbows inward rotation to keeping it more straight line at the same time to feel more on the side of your the chest and your armpit and the shoulders. So lengthen it, extend it uh, more to the front or you can walk in your blocks a little more into the front. And keep it observed that the spine you are lengthening more from your lower back. So the kneecaps and check more with the leg position remains the same. If that hurts, maybe you can take a little more option to moving your foot slightly front, but not the hip. Your hip stays more to the back, and the spine keep lengthening higher, and the arms just stay in front. Check that your arms, that your elbows are turning inward rotation. The more you turn inward rotation internally, checking what's happening with your shoulders. So you are loosening up more with your shoulders and your legs, the chest, the side of the chest muscles. That would help you to do a lot when you go for a downward position or any asanas that combines with your arms and front position. So stay here for a few breaths, in and out through the nostrils. Exhale. To feel the simple and smoothness of the breath, inhale deeply. Exhale, continue. And keep observing that you're not sinking down. Well, you don't drop the elbows down. So stay straight and turn. Right? And just take one more. Inhale. Exhale. Yeah. And I'm slowly coming up to inhalation, center line. Stretch your both legs to the front. Then you need to switch. So this time you bring your the other leg, that's your right leg under your left knee cap, and then the left one goes under your right. So if you would have done this way, and then you switch, so you just make sure that you need to change to the other set, right? And trying to focus on the knee cap, and then your foot is just not coming outside. It just stays under your kneecap and spine stays straight line the same way bringing the hands just first there on the mat walk your hands in front so the spine lengthening you're not dropping down and then bring one hand on the top of the block and check the elbow turns inward rotation take your other hand also press the same way that your elbow turn inward rotation so that's the straight line from your sides the shoulder Pressing the palms so the finger stays just light on the legs, your neck lengthen. So your gaze will be looking down at the mat. So not in front, not down to the chest, just down on the mat. And keep bringing the elbows. The awareness comes to the elbows and the shoulders. Checking with your forearms. So this will help you to align your upper part of your limbs, especially if you have a hyperextension of your elbows. So, so those who have hyperextensions, the elbows will move more outward direction. This brings more control on your shoulder and in the upper part of your spine and the trapezius. So try to keep it more straight and keeping elbows more inward rotation to stay. The more you keep the inward rotation of your elbows, it always keeps you more challenging also your arms and the sides of the shoulders to hold that position, right? So stay here for now for deep breath, inhalation, deep. Exhale, smoke. Inhale. Exhale. It's another one, inhale. Exhale. 
And slow, bring your hands just down. Then walk your hands to the back. Sort of ease your legs. Stretch your both legs to the front. So just taking a little bit of move, shaking out the legs. Cross the legs, bring your hands to the front. So that's you getting your all fours. Placing the blocks and then your hands, the palms on the top of the block. So maintain the same level of the gap to check to give the wrist under the shoulders, you're not going front and back. The knees are under your hips, it's not going back and front. Curl the toes under your ankles and dropping your tummy to take a nice arch to check the chest and the shoulders, you're not hunching. Try to bring it up. So you press the palms nicely. You can look up. Exhale, round it. You need to keep pressing. So pushing your block nicely to focus more with your upper part, the thoracic. Shoulders, chin to the chest. We'll go for another four movements. Inhale, up and arch. Exhale, round and smooth. Take another three, inhale, up. Exhale. We go for a two, inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Take one more, inhale. Neutral here and bringing the knees in closer. And again, just move your hips back and bringing your block into the top height position. So check once again, so don't confuse. This is your top height, the length, and the middle, and then the low. So try to put them in the top height. And you're going to drop your elbows down there on the top of your uh, block. So dropping them out first will be your one hand and then taking the other hand down. And check the hands, they're pressing the palms, the fingers are pointing up, back. And so you to walk your knees to the back. So you're not walking the knees too much to the back also. So the knees stays under your hips, so close the toes under. And don't sink down again, so that you're not walking with your back bend or arching. But getting more control for the spine and the shoulders. You need to press the elbows and try to pull your abdomen in. So check. You can see the movement of the spine. I'm not pressing down, but instead trying to pull my abdomen in. So that you get a little bit of curve on the spine. That's it's just fine as long as you feel it on the shoulders, right? And then your head stay just between your triceps, or we can drop the head down as well if your head can reach all the way down. That's fine. And try to pull your abdomen and keep pulling your abdomen. The elbows and your triceps are pressing down on the block. Just aware that you are not sinking down. The moment you start to sink, your chest will drop and that create unnecessary pressure on your shoulders. So just stay here for another 10. Take smooth for the breath. The counting is actually your breath. Nine. For every count, you need to go for inhalation and exhalation. Eight. Check once again with your abdomen. You're not dropping your abdomen down. You pull your abdomen in where your abdominal muscles gets active. Seven. And a six. The block should stay more stable. Or if you don't have the block always, as I told you before, you can just drop the elbows down on the mat as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Six. Or even if you have the chair, you could drop the elbows on the top of the chair, but make sure that the chair should be more solid. A five. So at this point, you'll be feeling more on the shoulders and the sides and triceps. And check, especially if you are triceps. A four. The counting is your breath. So every count, you need to inhale and exhale. So the fingers still pointing up. I'm not bringing my fingers too close to my neck. A four. Just a three more breaths to go. Three. Two more. 
last one breath inhalation as you exhale so when you release you just need to be more aware you're gonna walk your knees in front slowly so that way your hands get more uh, lighter and then you can release your hands to so one hand another hand so dropping your body down here completely for a child pose to allow your arms by your sides relax the shoulders and the forehead down so feel more with your shoulders here and your arms and then just move come up sit up dropping the block and stand up to the position of your standing right and just put one block away and just keep on blocking front with your low height place a block just there on the mat in front and the spine stays straight line with the standing position you can bring your right foot on the top of the block and the left foot, step back. Try to check more the gap between the legs not too close and not more wider, right? So it's about the two feet a gap, a more than one and a half or two, or two and a half, one and a half to two feet gap. And you need to turn your left foot slightly outward direction, but you're not turning the hip. So I'm facing the camera here. You can see that I'm not turning my head. So the hip stays in front. The knees are in a nice straight line and check more with the hips so when you press the sole of the foot not just the tops press the sole the ball of the foot the heel is pressing on the mat the knees are nice straight hands can stay there on your waistline so you can understand the rotation of your pelvic so when you go down and you need to focus more from the lower hinge from the back and the abdomen pull in and try to lengthen more your spine to the front your knees remain straight line and hands just there on your waist. The elbows and shoulders are moving up, but don't drop the chest. You try to bring the chest and abdomen pull in, control your abdomen, lengthen more of your spine. Stay there. So work with your right side of your hamstring and checking more with your right calf muscle. The right outer hip turning more backward, the left outer hip bringing more inward it's more uh, challenging to understand here virtually to observe more on your sides rotations the right hip to the back the left hip in front so knees remain straight the neck keep lengthening since your hands are there on the waist it's much more easier to holding on to the position so regular practice if you need a little more challenging with your movement and alignment what you can do is you can stretch the arms to the front but when you're stretching the arms in front just make sure that your elbows are straight the same way you're turning the internal rotations and not outer not external rotation right so stay with that for another five more so it's holding holding are you guys holding on to the position yes i will come up to give some instruction and then i'll go back to the position but make sure you guys just stay there three a two so when you come up using your abdomen so don't pr put pressure on the kneecap and then one coming up to inhale straight landing so bring the right foot down on the mat and bring both legs just first together spine remains straight right and you can get your left base of the foot the sole of the foot on the block and then your right foot step back turn it up knee straight and try to focus once again your right knee stays straight pull back the left knee stays straight the back of the knee press them and then press the sole turn the hip and aware that i'm just turning completely in front so there is no slanting on your hip right so once the knees are straight line so try to create the set the base should be more solid so when you go down you'll be able to hold your position if your legs are not solid the moment you go down you'll come up so try to check more on it straight line turn check the hips try to fix one particular point so your focus will not change your eyes that's the twisty point around again a more from the power so when you go down here and a halfway your abdomen pull in but you're not making around the back and then either you're not arching the spine right so stay with that line stay breathe 
Same challenging level here. If needed, you might stretch arms in front. But you need to lengthen more in front. But don't stretch your arms to the front to touch the wall or whatever the object that you have. Right? So the moment you touch it, you will lose that stretches on your legs and the extension of the spine. So keeping the extension on the spine, keeping the stretches on your left hand string, and then the right outer hip comes in, left outer hip move back. So if you keep a block on your lower back, it should stay just stable, right? So it just stays just there on the stable line. And it's not sliding, you're not moving down, it's not falling down. That's the positions that you're trying to uh, achieve here to holding that position, to breathe. Stay a few more breaths. Talk about again your timing and the holding time. But you should feel, you should feel that your left leg. So pull your kneecap higher towards the thigh. You're not locking up, but trying to contract the muscle of your thigh. Spine stays straight, abdomen stays active. Using your abdomen and the strength. Come up, inhale, higher, and slowly. Put your left foot down, right foot down. So now you have, you have stretched your both legs, the back of the thighs a little more. So now we'll go with the same way with both legs. You just need to place your right foot on the top of the block and press the heel down on the mat. So the way that the heel is pressing down, but the toe and the base is touching the block. You can bring your left foot also on the top and stay straight. So try to check more the spine, right? So you're not moving to the front like this and you're not arching the spine like this. Try to tuck the pelvic bone in front, engage your thighs and the knees straight, lift the sternum up, relax the shoulders, arms to the sides. That's again your tarasana, the mountain, the standing position, but you should feel more of your calf muscles. Pressing onto the toes, you're gonna do it about five times Remember, just for five times, you just press the toes and the heels. Lift up so you're elevating higher. Uh, so if you have the wall on the sides, you can reach it down, just like me. Uh, drop it down, then you're gonna go for another four more times and lift up and drop down. The heels are getting up, right? Three more, lift up and drop it down. Two more, lift the heels and drop it down. But one more time, bring the heels and drop it down. So this time, stay. Now your heels are down on the mat, the toes are on the block, the knees are straight line, hinge again from the lower back, rotate the pelvic, knees straight. Rotate again, knees straight. Each time when you come down here to observe more with the kneecaps, that should stay more straight line. All right, so now you can see that, that clearly it's more far. Straight line the knees down and straight line the knees. So you push back and back and back. That's stay, you know. So you don't go down all the way here. Stay here. You don't use your hands to push the knee cap, kneecap. I'm just keeping my hands on the top of the thighs only just for the support, but I'm not pushing my kneecaps. That's more dangerous for your knees, right? So you don't push. Knees are straight. The joints to be more safe all the time. Any type of practices that you do. Keep lengthening the spine. If you don't have a block to place it in front, what you can do is just use the bottle, water bottle to place it right in front and place the right hand and the left on the top. And the knee stays straight, lengthen the ball spine. But let's say if you have a block in front, try to use the block, place the hands. So turning the elbows in, the same rotation. Knees are straight, lengthen the ball spine, push there. The tailbone lifting up to the ceiling. The buttocks, the muscles that you need to feel that's moving up higher and checking out more with your knees a straight line and trying to focus more of your elbows a straight line so your arm stays more lighter so your arms are still lighter. You're not creating any pressure on the hands. The whole pressure stays on the legs but the spine doesn't move down all the way like a fall bed Uttanasana. Stay half length. You pull your abdomen in. Lengthen this one. Stay for another five. Four. The stretch, you will feel it. The three, maybe not today, tomorrow. That's the soreness. 
two, and then one. So when you're coming up, don't come up right away. You'll bring your hands down first. Then you drop the hands, drop the foot on the mat, and you just move the block away. Bring your legs in closer. You round the spine. Smooth. Come up. So roll the shoulders and the chest nicely out, with your feet apart for hip distance, hands at the back. So moving the hips slightly in front, roll the shoulders and slide, and push the hips. So there's no compression on the back, you need to lift the thoracic more higher ceiling. Get back to the center, right, release. So now we can feel that there's something is released on the back of your legs. The extension of the sides, the arms, the extension of the spine. So you put together now, we'll go into the position of Atomuga Svanasana. You know right what is that position is called? Atomuga Svanasana. That's called a downward facing dog that we always do in the class. So, the first one for our tongue was one asana, so we're gonna keep our blocks in the position of medium, middle height position, something like this. I'm not keeping the low, I'm not keeping the height. It's just the middle one, right? So try to focus more this particular corner. So my index to focus my index finger that comes exactly to the midline, and then the thumb that stays in, and other three fingers comes outside to hold the block in a more in a grip way. So once you hold this way, the whole grip will be there on the hand and the block, so you will not slip down from your block. So place it down on the mat. Checking out the hips, so the knees. So try to put your blocks right in front, on the top of the mat, so no cheating. Don't put the block to the middle one, right? Press the block nicely. Curl the toes then. Elbows are turning inward rotation. Remember the first move that we have done, the same way to try to turn the elbows inward rotation. Tuck the toes and then push the knees up and ground the heels there. Try to ground the heels there. Your neck, check the spine. You're not dropping the chest down here. Don't sink the chest. You can put your feet apart. That would be more great because your hands are a little closer and your hands are still on the block, right? So you can lift the tailbone more up. The three things that you need to observe all the time with your downward position, ground the heels, if not soft on the knees, lift the tailbone, but you're not sinking the chest. Elbows are turning inward rotation. Your head stay relaxed, just stay another 10, get 9, 8, try to walk here, blocks even more front, or the legs goes all the way back to reach the mat, the 5, take 4, and 3, get in 2, and 1, good, drop the knees down, and now then, do the same way once again, you turn the block into the low height position where you can just put the block exactly at the top so there is no gap in front the the top the edge and then the block stays exactly in line then place your hands on the top the same as when you move the legs back legs should go exactly at the end right so the tip of the mat on the back pressing the hands Spreading your fingers. Remember, don't sink. Don't drop down like child pose. Keep the elbows straight. Turning elbows. Inward rotation. Nicely. Inward rotation. The head stays down, relax. Use your legs. Press. And then your hips. Up. Once the hips goes higher, check the tailbone goes up. Then walk your legs. Back. Walk your legs back and try to ground the heels if you can if not fine you can just walk your legs on your friend lift the tailbone don't sink down turn the elbows to check inward rotation 
in the head. Stay there, relax for another 15, 14, 13, the holding time is always longer, 12, shaking out the shoulders, 11, 10, 9, guys, try to do it, follow it, don't rest, try to bring it up again, 9, 8, the set. Six. You will feel the shoulders. They elevate more the shoulders. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Drop down. That's right. Then you can move the blocks away. Ultimately, uh, we are trying to do a posture without any props, right? So that's what is all about alignment. You need to try with your props. It can be a belt or a towel or, or a strap or blocks, whatever you have. You, you try with that and then you do the same practice without any props and then you see how your body reacting. And then from that onwards, you just need to work on it. Then you can understand how your body is reacting with every single asana. So that's how you need to structure your body, right? So every individual body is just different from everyone. So you need to work on your own system. Not necessarily that you have to do a download of exactly what I'm doing, but you just need to observe and analyze how your body is responding to that particular asana in that particular time. The time must matter, right? So sometimes when you do a download up in the morning, sometimes easier. And when you do the same pause in the evening, it becomes challenging. So observe and respond to your body, right? So you're gonna do your downward dog now again because this is one of the asanas that you do every other classes. So there you go, without any props. The hands that you need to spread nicely to press, shift the weight equally, pressing. And then the knee stays just down there and focus. Remember the hand position once you press it, turning, elbows inward rotation. So that this, this movement will be a little bit challenging if you have the hyperextension, but you need to get that control of movement to elevate the shoulder. The movement of this. The elevation of the shoulder is at this. So not the depression. The moment you start to depress the shoulder, you will start to get some kind of uh, discomfort on your elbow or you might get a muscle sprain on the neck or your arm or the shoulder. So careful with that movement, right? So when you go for a downward dog position, try to elevate, try to push, and maximum push that you create, the maximum balance that you can get to hold your asana, right? Spreading fingers nicely. Press the palms, right? Curl the toes, turning the elbows in, dropping the head, and the hips goes up. Check the back of the kneecap. Let you walk your legs back again. See if you can ground it nicely. If not, it's always the choice is there to bend a little bit. Turning elbows. You're not sinking down. Then a push and elevate. Elevate. Elevate the shoulder. And the more you create an elevation of shoulder, the shoulders will reach the lobe of the ears. And then you can get that your hands the grip and the balance, your fingers will not move front because that you're elevating. You're not depressing the shoulder, right? Stay with that for another 15, 14, don't sink your body down, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six. It is challenging. Five. If it's a normal class in the studio, then you need to hold this position for a minute. Four, three, two, and one. Drop it down. So that's your Atomoga Swanasana. Keep practicing the same position again and again, again and again. So the whole posterior, the back of your spine 
and the legs will go exactly in the same and a good position so where you can reach from the top to the bottom of the mat so you just need to use the full mat you don't place the hands after skipping up a 25 percent and don't put the legs just there here it's just not the complete down with position so you need to use your full mat right so if you have any kind of a doubt or anything comments with the downward dog position, put it there. I'll just have a look at it later and then we can discuss about it. And then you go for a position again to work with your hips, to work with your abdomen, to work with the shoulder, to reach warrior three, that's your Vedabhatrasana. So before you're going into the position of a Vedabhatrasana, so it starts with this, something like with the downward dog position, is stepping your right foot front and keeping the back knee straight, use your blocks on the sides. Lengthen the spine. So you can check that the back leg stays straight and point more up, spine stays straight. So if you don't have the block, again, I told you before, use the water bottle, there's just one bottle is just on the side. You can place the hand and trying to lengthen the spine nicely. So that's the step one. So we go step by step, right? So this is the first step that you need to do with lengthening the spine. And then you bring your left foot front. So when you bring the left foot forward, try to check more the object that still stays next to your foot. It can be a water bottle or it can be your block. That's fine, right? And then step your other foot, that's your right foot, to the back. I'm just moving front and back because I just want to fit it into the camera. I hope you guys understand that your leg is just back, but I'm not keeping my heel down on the mat, right? Lengthen. So I just want to get the movement of the spine lengthening and the back leg stays stronger, front leg stays 90 degree. Try to check. We'll go for another two more movements the same way. Step your right foot front, left foot back. Length, length. So you need to understand one more thing that your hands are just pressing the block. You're not completely pulling the weight on the hands. They become more challenging. Your leg will go down, drop down. Straight, length. Step your left foot front, right foot back. Length. The shooting of the body in front. Check the neck. That's right. Yeah. And the right foot front, left foot back. That's the third set, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, let's start with the right foot. Keep lengthening, keep lengthening. And then you go to bring your left forward, right foot back. That's the last set. So, here, keep lengthening, you're not sinking the hip down here for a high lunge position or a low lunge position. Legs will stay straight and lengthen. That's good. And then bring both legs together. And smooth. To stand up, put the hands in the back, move the hips to the front, a little arch on the spine, and go down again a full bend. So step your right foot back here. So you have been doing this particular movement and from now, so once you step one foot back, up for a high lunge. So when you go up higher, press the back of the left thigh down and push the right kneecap higher. And the left leg stays 90 degrees. And don't get out of the spine here. Pull your abdomen, strong legs to stretch the arms. The same elevation of shoulders, right? Hands down, right foot flat. Feel it with the legs. Left foot back. Right leg, stable. 90 degree action, sending the back of the left thigh up to the ceiling. You should contract the muscle of the left thigh. Lengthen the spine. Rise. You turn the left out the hip in front, right out the hip to the back, back of the right thigh press, left leg stay strong, stretch up and elevate the shoulder, right? 
that job. So another two more times, same way, do it with me. Right leg back, guys, do it with me. Come up, come up, come up. Ups, stretch for five, four, three, two. A one hands down block, make sure you bring the foot for a knot back because I want you to use the legs, not the hands. Send your left foot back, 90 degree, up higher, stretch and press the outer hip, back knee, front leg, down, one more set to go, there you go, step right foot back, left foot back, 90, arms to stretch, push, elevate the shoulders, and drop, right foot frame, left foot back, right 90, straight to the back, arms, press, and drop, there you go, so you can just get the shape out of the legs, and slowly, you drop the knees down, you're just dropping the knees, curl the toes, move your hips back, sit down, like this, place your hands on the top of the thighs, facing, turn, face your head towards the camera, so you guys will be looking at me, this is your resting pose to see what is the next move that you're going to do with and at the same time you need to maintain the stretch here on your ankle. If this is challenging, sit in any comfortable position, right? But try to focus because next move is more important to shooting up the body. Before you're shooting up the body, how you need to move the body in front. So now we are here, we done one foot back, we done with this, we done with this. From now, interlace and stretch, push, bring the chest to the knee. This is the movement. When you bring the chest to the knee, when I say bring the chest to the knee, literally bring the chest to the knee. Not that you're resting abdomen like this. See, there's a gap, right? So this is the gap between the chest and the kneecap. You can see my kneecap. You try to bring the chest on the knee, sending arms in front, the wrist that will go more up higher. So the wrist stays more higher than the shoulder. And then drop down. Up. Leg for that. So then step your other leg back. Up higher near the position interlace. Bring the chest to the kneecap. Send the wrist up higher than the shoulder. So when you're sending the wrist higher, don't, you're not lifting the body. Right? And drop the hands. Bring the foot front. Right? That's the second move. Come on. There you go. Okay, wait. Wait, wait. So because we don't have a time, I'll finish it up with your warrior three, then we will do it continuously together, everyone. Right? So check what we're gonna do it now here. From the fall bend, stepping right back, bending the knee, arms up, shoot. Elbows, kick, and then up, drop, left front, left foot back, bend, arms, interlace, chest to the knee, then you shoot, bend the back, hands down, left foot front, tadasana. So the starting and ending point is your Tadasana. We'll do it, right? So begin with Tadasana, tuck the pelvic, arms to the sides. So placing the block or water bottle or whatever that you have the object on the side for the support. No books, please. And smooth, arms inhale, forward exit on the top, half inhalation. Right foot back, left leg 90 degree, arms inhale, interlace to stretch, bring the chest to the knee, wrist away, more high than the shoulder, shoot for a warrior three, the keeping back leg stays stronger, four, three, two, one, soften the left leg, 
drop the right. Come up, inhale, hands down, right foot front, stay with the forward line. Step your left foot back, bend to the right. Bigger raise arms, inhale, interlace, shoot front fist, resting chest, not your abdomen, guys, the chest on the knees, and your desire, shoot. Hips equal line, stay steady and stronger. Soften the right, there you go, up. Hands down. That's right, right? Go ahead, right foot back. Bend the left. Arms up. Interlace, up. Shoot, chest touching. Wrist higher, right, shoot it up. Strong, strong it more in the big toe pressing. Left leg bend. Up. Hands down. Right foot front. Good. Left foot back. Length. You're repeating all the thing from the beginning. This is what you did first. Second. Third. Achieve. Strength. Smooth down. Up higher. Hands down. Front. Good. Go again. Right back. Bend. Ups. Higher. Smooth. Chest touching. Wrist higher. Shoot. Right. Stay strong. And go back. Hands down. Right front. Left back. There you go. I know what you guys are thinking about. It. How many rounds more, right? Okay, one more round to go after this. Rise. Up. Shoot. There you go. Strand. That's right. And bend the right and up. Hands down. Left. Last one. Last one, guys. Go. Go, 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 go ahead. We started off together. We'll end it up together. Right? Right foot back, left bending, arms, take it smooth so you won't get, miss the balance, get it up, strength, there you go, drop, front, left leg, bend the right, arms, the more you go fast you will lose your energy, like me, front down, Go. Shoot it up. That's the one. Go up. Hands down. Left front. Right arms. Talasana. Roll the shoulders. Check the breath. Relax more of the body. Okay. And slowly. Sit down. What you can do is just when you sit down and lying down on the back, placing the block in a T-shape, let's say, if you don't have a block at all, what you can do? If you have a blanket, place the blanket on the back. If that is challenging, let's say you don't want to take a blanket, fine, just normal savasana. You have all these options to choose, normal savasana or the block. T-shape, something like this. Something like this, T-shape. So this particular part, for you to rest your spinal cup. There's a gap between your lower back and the block. And you're moving back again here, resting the spinal cup, not the vertebrae. The second block, for you to rest your head. And then the shoulders and arms stay more out to get open. Legs are in butterfly position. So you can maintain this position for a while to relax, to settle down completely. And after that, after relaxing yourself with your Savasana, then you can close your practice. So that's the end of the practice now. And I'm gonna be there for the next five minutes there in front of the camera to just chat with you guys. And then you guys do let me know. No, this is just a mocking. This is for fun. So I can walk nicely. 
Ah, okay. I hope you guys uh, are done. A good practice with me. Overall practice of today, the line man, if you see that we have done just a two, or maybe I would say only one asana, that is your Virabhatrasana, three. And all other movements are preparatory exercises. When you do a preparatory exercises before attaining, before trying any kind of asana, that you will find a complete difference. So instead of without doing any kind of warming up practices, you do and any practice that will not help first thing. And second thing that higher chances of getting injuries. Remember that your body is your everything. So if you don't have, if you just injured yourself, then you can't move, you can't do anything. Just be careful with that. So be conscious and anxious about, caution about your practice, whatever you do, whatever classes that you do, be aware, right? And guys, guys, then I'm just looking forward to any kind of uh, comments or uh, recommendations or suggestions. Feel free to comment here, right? So let me just uh, quickly go through here for any other things that I can see. Suggestions, suggestions, comments. All guys, uh, good morning, waving off, good morning, waving off, thumbs up, thumbs up, love. Good morning, good morning, good morning, okay. You guys just like, once you're ready for the any kind of classes, you just start to do it. First time doing alignment class. I hope you enjoyed it, I guess, as much as I do. And you can see my face is like perspiring a lot. Loud and clear. You want me to loud and clear means this is not loud and clear. You want me to increase my volume more? Please put up a suggestion again, man. Thank you. In case if this is not um, loud enough, I will next time I will just scream. Maybe uh, the neighbor uncle might come and knock my door. Thanks, Derek. Good to see you here after a long time. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Count faster, actually, I, um, I cannot count faster than this because I'm doing, that's why I put it in 15 seconds, and 15 counts, not a seconds. Um, otherwise, it, it's, it's always like a one minute for every posture, right? Okay, oh, thanks, thanks for the lippens. <laughs> Good guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just quickly going through for all the way to see if there are any commands. You can still speak continuously without panting your breath. Okay, <laughs> good, that's a secret. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Feeling stretched, oh, okay, good. Do your happy hips class again. Do your happy hips class again, then for next one week, I can't move my hip anywhere else then. More hatha too, okay. A bit dark uh, background, oh, okay, maybe I think because of the light, maybe I will do something about that, because there's the only point that I have a, a white color background. This was amazing, maybe alignment class on more advanced asanas loved today's sessions. Okay, thank you. I'll just keep this in mind also and that I will forward this command to the supervisors, happy hips. Okay, thank you, thank you guys. Thanks, 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 thanks. A lot of thanks, a lot of thanks. Alignment for shoulders, please, possible? Okay, I will just check it out because you need to do a lot of movement for the shoulders uh, with um, limited props. It's quite challenging, but still can do it. Always the heart is supposed to do well and hold. That's right, warrior three, always. That's why it's called as warrior three. Downward dock, we are doing elevation of shoulder or not depression? Yeah, the elevation always must go elevate the shoulder with the downward, not depression. The moment you do depression, you are compressing your upper part of the body. It might injure your shoulders, right? Thank you very much, guys, for your continuous support. Stay tuned for a lot of classes are coming on the way, right? So with me, next class is gonna be uh, Hatta 2 on this Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Thank you very much. I'm gonna end the call, end the life now. Hopefully. Are you sure that you wanna end? Yes, end.